Ladies and gentlemen, I put my life on the line to answer one of life's most important questions, which is how can we enjoy ice cream in the least damaging way possible? Now, as much as I try to convince myself otherwise, I still have a sweet tooth and I enjoy ice cream from time to time. In fact, I'm known to be quite the ice cream connoisseur. Tillamook, please sponsor me. I'm rocking a CGM I got from Levels to actually monitor my blood sugar around the clock. And leave a comment down below, cast your votes. Which one do you think is gonna result in the flattest, most favorable sugar response curve? So remember, having a big spike is bad, having a lot of spikes is not as bad, and the best is being totally flat. So let me know which one you think is gonna result in the best response curve. And big thanks to Levels for sponsoring this video. Check them out with the link down in the description. So in these other videos, we actually go over why having a more flat blood sugar response is better. And obviously eating sweets like ice cream or other sugary things is gonna give you more spikes. And those spikes aren't good. Now this isn't a perfect experiment, but I tried to standardize things. So rather than actually scooping out ice cream and then weighing it, I had these Tillamook ice cream sandwiches. Eating just one, which is 200 calories, didn't do anything to my blood sugar, even at baseline. So not a good control. So I had two and that's 400 calories. And here's the nutrition facts that would spike me. So I did two controls and I made sure not to eat or exercise after eating the ice cream sandwiches for about two hours to allow those glucose response curves to be unencumbered. So as you can see from control one, I got up to 127 and from control two, I got up to 137. Then the question becomes, should you eat those ice cream sandwiches before or after a workout? What's gonna have a better response? So next up came zone two cardio. It is 9.55. We are about to get on the trainer and do some zone two. So I'm gonna do ice cream sandwiches. Here we go. So first doing it before zone two cardio and the first experiment only went up to 96. That is a beautiful, very flat response. I like that a lot. The second time was also super flat. Well, I got up to 120, but I think that's because I ate something towards the end of that two hour window. So zone two looking great, as long as you're doing it right before zone two. Now keep in mind, I'm doing my best to do this early enough in the day where it's not in the evenings where melatonin secretion is higher, which then inhibits your insulin secretion. Yada, yada, yada. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to minimize variables, but you know, I gotta live my life too. So I'm not doing it at the same time every single day, but it's either the morning or the afternoons. But now let's check out after zone two. Man, the things I do for you guys, eating two ice cream sandwiches right after this. We got one minute left on an empty stomach. So we're gonna be fasting just to minimize variables. And every morning I'll be trying to eat the sandwich before or after exercise, before I eat any other meals. All right, here we go. So after zone two in test number one, hit a 156. That's higher than, than the control even. And the second time, a 131 after zone two. So zone two training is the hot thing in uh, the health and wellness space. And it comes down to having a steady state, lower intensity cardio, where you can essentially hold a conversation, but it's a little bit challenging to do so. And it has to do with your lactate threshold, whereby you're generating and clearing lactate at the same level, which occurs right around two millimole or so. But anyways, all you gotta know is that it's a lower intensity, steady state. And keep in mind that all these workouts are at least an hour, maybe an hour 15. All right, so if zone two controlled things pretty well, what about more intense cardio? So we were doing a bit of VO2 work and that's where you're at zone four, zone five. So my heart rate was around the 150s, maybe even 160. And it's definitely a lot more intense than zone two, but it's not sprints. Actually, I did do one set of sprints. We're about to do some zone five. One thing I do really appreciate is how easy it is to use this app. Cause I actually tried running this app or tried running this experiment previously using a different CGM app. And it was, um, we just like couldn't even gather the data. The app kept skipping around different days and logging it wasn't as straightforward. And I'm, I'm very grateful for the user interface that Levels has created. All right, really want to minimize the time between eating and getting on the bike. Now, if you're wondering why I'm rocking this sexy headband, it's because I use a serum in my scalp for hair loss. And you can actually see the full video about hair loss up here in that corner. But essentially when the serum runs on my forehead, when I sweat, I get worse acne. So hoping the headband blocks it. Doing it 
before zone five. Here are the results, which definitely surprised me. I went up to 135. I thought that zone five would have better control than zone two. And then doing it after zone five, we went super high to 171. But I also did it after sprints. So sprints are not these things that I do as frequently, but this was all out testing where I did a, a maximal effort sprint. My heart rate was getting to the high 180s. And I was like, okay, this is gonna deplete me. This should have a really favorable response. No, I hit 155. Again, that's having the ice cream sandwiches after the really intense all out uh, sprint effort. Next up is strength training. So again, before and after, starting with before. All right, we are in the gym parking lot. We're gonna try two sandwiches before strength training. Let's see what happens. Dude, these totally hit the spot. G spot. Hot Vegas summer day. Mm. Time for number two. We got up to 126. Now also keep in mind, I'm like taking the ice cream sandwiches in my car to the gym, eating it in the parking lot and then starting. So I'm minimizing the time between eating the ice cream sandwich and starting the workout to keep variables as constant as possible. And then doing it after strength training, I hit a 138. So these results to me are surprising, maybe to those who are a little bit more familiar with the metabolic literature, maybe it's not surprising. All right, take on points. Number one is, if I wanna enjoy some sugary treats, I should do it right before zone two training to minimize the damage. And number two, more experimentation is necessary for a greater understanding of uh, this exercise and sweet relationship. And um, I will gladly suffer for the progress of science. I remember when I first got a CGM from Levels in 2019, I remember going on a very intense bike ride. I have this route at Red Rock National Park. It's like 90, maybe an hour or 90 minutes and there's a lot of climbing, so you're getting pretty gassed. And it's also easier to push yourself outside. All these bike rides I was doing in this test were all indoors on my indoor trainer, where you can keep variables extremely constant because on a smart trainer, you can set the exact resistance. How much power am I putting out each pedal stroke? Whereas outdoors, you can't do that. But I did this really intense bike ride, an all out effort, came back home, I was like, cool, let me test this thing out. Had two cookies and maybe two scoops of ice cream, like a lot of, a lot of junky sugar and I was totally flat. And I thought that exercise becomes this massive cheat enabler, but what I'm learning here is that two things. Number one, if you're gonna have the sugary treats after exercise, it seems to me that that exercise needs to deplete your glycogen stores. So it has to be super intense, either you know a high intensity in a one hour or you know shorter period of time, or a longer ride at a lower intensity to again, deplete those glycogen stores. So you don't wanna be refueling too much during that exercise and then that brings in some issues too. I wanna to do more testing with that to test that assumption because here with the sprints, I spiked way harder than I thought. So perhaps unsurprisingly, eating your sugary treats before exercise is gonna have a better response than after exercise in most situations if you're not super depleting your glycogen stores. But what surprised me more was that zone two seemed to be more effective than higher intensity cardio, like zone four, zone five. And I'm not sure why. Again, maybe some of you who are smarter than me can hypothesize in the comments below because both zone two, which is aerobic, right? And you are uh, doing the whole electron transport chain. You're using glucose in both the aerobic and anaerobic. In zone four, zone five, you still are aerobic, but then towards the tail end of an interval, that's when you start getting more aerobic, which is glycolytic, but again, it's still using glucose. But now you're doing a, a less efficient form of glucose metabolism that does not use the electron transport chain and, and all that stuff that we learned in high school. But the thing that doesn't make sense to me is how having it before zone five gave me a worse spike than having it before even strength training. I think I need to do more testing, but I've had a lot of ice cream and I need to cool it for a little bit but maybe I'll resume this experiment in a few months if you guys are interested in knowing about the more intense outdoor cardio and seeing a bit more nuanced results. If you wanna try some experiments yourself, then check out Levels. They, they're my favorite biowearable company. They give you access to CGMs, continuous glucose monitors, and they have this really slick app that makes it so much easier to actually run these experiments because it logs in your exercise and you can put in meals, but they make it super clear to view the results of your exercise, your sleep, your nutrition, and then actually make those actionable changes so that you can live a healthier life. If you use the link in the description, you'll get two months free on your membership and it does also help support the channel. Big thanks again to Levels for supporting the channel for so long. Much love my friends and I'll see you all in the next one.